Okay, so we're now recording. So welcome to a UNCG Libraries Research and Application Webinar on What's New with JSTOR by Maggie Murphy, UNCG Libraries Visual Art and Humanities Librarian. Thank you, Maggie. Of course. All right. Um, so as Sam said, uh, I'm Maggie. Um, I, uh, I'm going to move that off so it doesn't block anything. Um, uh, I work with the School of Art, Departments of History, Philosophy, Religious Studies, Languages, Literatures, and Cultures, and Interior Architecture, as well as the Weatherspoon Art Museum. Uh, you can email me at mmurphy at uncg.edu, as well as make an appointment with me directly, go.uncg.edu slash Maggie. Um, so today we're going to be talking about uh, what's new with JSTOR, but in case you have never used JSTOR before and don't know what it is, it is a digital library and database of thousands of journals, ebooks, primary sources, and images. And so thousands of journals uh, at the item level of articles, ebook chapters, sources, books, et cetera, um, or images, et cetera, it's uh, hundreds of thousands. Um, uh, images alone, there is, I think, about 1.2 million. Um, so to get to JSTOR, uh, it is one of our easier databases to access because um, you can uh, log in directly through JSTOR um, at jstor.org uh, instead of having to follow a link from the library's website. So if you are on campus, jstor.org, uh, you will see this access provided by UNC Greensboro up at the top based on the IP range of our wired access and our Wi-Fi. Um, and so you can use JSTOR without having to do anything but go to jstor.org. However, um, if you want to use the workspace, which we'll talk about in a second, you should log in. Um, and if you're off campus, you should also log in uh, with your UNCG account. And so I'll show you what this looks like. Um, just give me one moment to X out here and I'm going to go to jstor.org. Um, so to uh, log in, and I've got my Zotero bar up top, that I'm going to close, you can go to log in. And then looking for your institution, find my institution. It uh, helpfully provides a list of North Carolina institutions here, and I don't believe we are on it. So what I always recommend is searching for Greensboro. Uh, you will see UNC Greensboro right here on the list. And then uh, it will push through your um, UNCG institutional login. Since I'm already logged in to like Zoom and my email and a bunch of other things, I didn't see that Microsoft login screen. Um, but if you are not logged into anything else associated with your UNCG ITS account, um, then you will see that login screen very familiar to you for your email, Canvas, all other things um, tied to that login. Um, and so once you are logged in, uh, you'll see um, your UNCG email up top. Okay, so back to what's new with JSTOR. Oh, you got to see my little animations again. Okay, um, so just what I'm going to quickly talk about during this research and applications webinar um, is the integration of images into JSTOR searches, as well as the migration of the Art Store platform uh, JSTOR's art image library that um, has previously uh, been focused on artstore.org, uh, a companion platform, um, is being migrated over to the JSTOR platform, and they call this Art Store on JSTOR. Uh, then I'll talk about the workspace, which is a newer feature that you may have already been using, um, but uh, how it works and why you would use it. Um, as well as briefly mentioning JSTOR's new text analysis platform. Um, and uh, when I say JSTOR, I mean Ithaca, JSTOR's parent company, um, but it uses JSTOR data. Uh, it's called Constellate. And then um, uh, highlighting the JSTOR Labs platform, um, a publication called JSTOR Daily, which I find very helpful, as well as their LibGuides, which are meant for uh, faculty and students um, to uh, get overviews of how to use various JSTOR features. So um, images on JSTOR, uh, they're not new, new, but it's still a new feature. Um, uh, over the past about 18 months, they have started to integrate image results uh, in JSTOR searching. So when you do a search on JSTOR, by default, image results will appear uh, for your text searches um, up at the top. 
and these can be excluded with features. But if you're really into JSTOR's image searching capabilities, they also have a dedicated image searching tool that you can access under the top window uh, under search and then image search. Um, and I'll show you that in just a second. But as I also mentioned, Ithaca is in the process of migrating ArtStore digital library to JSTOR. Um, and so there's a direct link to ArtStore and JSTOR, which is jstor.org slash site slash ArtStore. For now, uh, artstore.org is still operational. Um, however, they've made it pretty clear that they are going to get rid of the separate art store platform, uh, probably as a cost saving measure, um, which will also pass the cost savings onto libraries and institutions. We won't have to pay separately for two separate platforms. Um, and so just to show you what art store and JSTOR looks like, it is a little different than JSTOR's image searching tool, which uh, again, I said you can go to from search and then image search, um, in that it still has all of ArtStore's dedicated collections from various um, contributors and institutions that you can browse. Um, and when you search on ArtStore, it is searching different metadata fields than when you do an image search on JSTOR. And so by what I mean as um, metadata is the image or the, the information about the image, the cataloging information about the image. So on ArtStore, information such as um, the collection that an image resides in, uh, in, you know, physically, what museum it belongs to, uh, data about um, the medium of creation, you know, is it painting, is it drawing, uh, is it, um, you know, how big is it, things like that, that uh, we think of as crucial data about images um, in the visual arts uh, are less important, um, you know, when you are thinking about uh, images as illustrations to go with research, which is the sort of context that JSTOR uses. Um, so when you search in ArtStore, you're searching through different information. The words that you enter um, are matched up against different information. Um, and so uh, to get to that JSTOR image search, like I said, you can go to image search here. Um, and so you're searching on images that are uh, in JSTOR and you can see um, they're giving you uh, different ways to browse through as well. Um, here, uh, dates, classification, those different media, again, um, country of origin, uh, collection. So actually it looks like they are starting to migrate over some of those um, other metadata fields. This is constantly being updated as they work on integrating ArtStore into JSTOR. Um, and so if actually you are interested in this process, I don't know why you would be, um, uh, they have monthly webinars of updates on how that migration is going. Uh, Art store on JSTOR monthly briefing. There's one next week. You can register if you are interested in Art Store moving to JSTOR. Okay. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, um, when you do just a textual search on JSTOR, or you're searching for unicorns. That's always I don't know my default demonstration search. Um, again, you'll see image results as a default. Uh, and so if you want to um, limit your results to exclude them, uh, you can use academic uh, content up here, um, and this will get rid of uh, primary source content, which is what they're classifying the images as, as primary sources. Um, and so if I just want to focus on, you know, journals, book chapters, etc., I can exclude those image results up top. Okay, so next I just want to talk about the JSTOR workspace. Um, and this is also uh, a platform or a feature that has gone through changes. Um, in fact, JSTOR's own documentation about this has screenshots that do not match up with the current interface, um, but it's primarily used for saving, organizing, annotating, and exporting uh, as a combined PDF or um, as uh, for images, a PowerPoint of slides um, with Im one image on each slide. Um, uh, from this workspace platform. Um, so to get to the JSTOR workspace, uh, if you're on JSTOR, it is under tools and then workspace, but you can also um, save your items from a search screen like this one. I'm just gonna close that yellow bar again. Um, uh, by, I'm just gonna keep popping up. Don't proxy this site, thank you. Sure. Let's go back to the search screen. Uh, that yellow bar is coming from Zotero, um, which we have many webinars available on recorded on our YouTube platform, 
our UNCG Libraries YouTube platform if you're interested, or you can contact your liaison librarian. Uh, but in any case, like I said, you can save directly to your workspace from this search screen here. Um, you can uh, save it to your general workspace, create a new folder for your workspace, or save it to an existing workspace. Um, so I'm just going to put that in the workspace here. Um, and same thing with images. Uh, you'll also see this little save uh, bookmark icon. Um, I don't know why it didn't bring me to the exact image I was already looking at, but in any case, um, you can save to your workspace from the image platform as well. To get to your workspace, again, it's tools and then workspace. And so here you will see um, uh, as a list. And so for actual images, um, you will only see the information about the image, the metadata here. Um, if you go to the gallery view, you will see thumbnails um, of both your text and your images. Uh, like I said, you can um, create folders and move things into folders. Uh, so here I have a folder called MetArt. Um, and uh, under the list view, you will also see um, any notes that you have added. So you can add a note to uh, annotate the text here. Um, uh, as I mentioned also, you can export um, your uh, text as PDF or as a PowerPoint. The PowerPoint only right now works for images because I'm not sure why you would want a PDF uh, image of each page of a text as a PowerPoint. Um, so if you have multiple images in your, uh, your folder, um, then it will appear as a PowerPoint. Right now, there's only one image in this folder. So if I export to PowerPoint, I believe we will see a PowerPoint with one slide. Oh, it's opening on a different screen. So I'm just gonna drag it over here and I hope you see it. Um, and so if I had <laughs> the folder called NetArt, uh, consisting of one thing here and under the, in the, um, the presenter notes field is all of that metadata or information about this image. And so this is um, a kind of satirical uh, diagram about making net art. Um, the art happens here. Uh, so um, the workspace is useful um, if you have a research project and you want to sort of organize and save things on JSTOR. Um, if you are uh, doing uh, research and you have uh, the need to organize, uh, annotate, export, cite um, things across many different platforms or, um, you know, all kinds of resources, then again, I recommend uh, asking your librarian about Zotero because um, Zotero can do that on a standalone platform that is really flexible and extensible um, and also allows you to cite as you write on Microsoft Word and in Google Docs. Um, so, uh, Workspace, again, they're always kind of tweaking it. Um, there was a feature for adding links for resources outside of JSTOR that has recently disappeared. It may come back, um, but uh, information about um, the workspace is also on the LibGuides, uh, as I mentioned, uh, which will be the sort of last thing I show you. Um, so I'm going to spend a couple minutes talking to you about Constellate, um, which is the new text analysis tool um, from Ithaca that uses JSTOR data. Um, and so text analysis is a uh, digital scholarship technique um, that allows uh, you to look at um, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of documents uh, full of text to find patterns um, uh, that would not be per, uh, perceptible to um, a human because of the scope of the amount of text uh, that you're looking at. Um, and so uh, text analysis, you can um, perform text analysis using various tools. Um, uh, why can't I think of what that platform is called? Voyant Tools is one um, that has a sort of uh, a user-friendly I just search it in case I don't, voyant-tools.org. Um, a user-friendly interface, you don't actually need any coding. You can upload documents um, or actually just paste in lines of text. Um, and uh, when you open it up, there are all kinds of tools that you can um, change the settings on and tweak and export visualizations. And it's very nice. Um, but what it's doing on the back end is running um, 
uh, using programming language, uh, either R or Python or a similar programming language. And so what Constellate um, aims to do is to teach you, the researcher, how to use Python uh, in order to perform text analysis using JSTOR's text data, um, as well as be able to actually teach the basics of it to someone else yourself. Uh, so if you are a graduate student, um, you could uh, do some peer teaching, it, um, or if you uh, are an instructor, you can teach students to do this using this platform. Um, so to get to Constellate, um, it's constellate.org. And so uh, it has step-by-step -step lessons and video tutorials, um, as well as uh, a integrated platform for importing your data sets defined from JSTOR um, and analyzing them on the Constellate platform. So Constellate is considered to be in beta right now, meaning it is not finished. Um, and so uh, you can see up here, again, you see access provided by the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, um, because right now we are a beta tester of this platform. Um, once they uh, decide that it is finished, um, then you will uh, probably have to make um, a login with a JSTOR account. Uh, they will always have a free um, kind of version of it. And we are evaluating whether we think it will be a useful resource. Right now, I don't think we have enough researchers interested in Constellate um, to uh, probably pay for the paid tier, but um, you'll be able to uh, use I have between 5,000 and 10,000 um, uh, documents from JSTOR um, during the free tier. So that's plenty if you are just sort of getting started and exploring. Um, so again, they have it separated into learn, teach, and build your data set, analyze it. Um, and so what I find really helpful, again, um, are these lessons. Um, so Nathan Kilbert used to work at UNC Chapel Hill as a digital humanities fellow. Um, and now he is the main developer uh, of the teaching aspect of Constellate. Um, and so uh, not only does it, um, you know, uh, walk you through how to perform specific kinds of functions for text analysis, but it actually gets you started with using Jupyter Notebooks, which is um, the kind of document you use for writing and executing, uh, executing code um, in Python, as well as um, lessons on uh, writing and structuring and editing Python code. Um, and uh, so a Jupyter Notebook, um, it tells you how to launch a Jupyter Notebook. Um, and uh, here you see about a 15 minute beginner lesson. Um, there is Nathan, there's some videos, et cetera. Um, and uh, so I find this to be very helpful to actually launch the Jupyter Notebook in which you can perform this lesson. Um, there is this little rocket ship, you know, you launch a rocket ship to open up uh, the binder. Um, and so this is the actual, uh, it is opening here. Um, this is the actual platform in which you write and execute code, um, a Jupyter Notebook. And so this is a Jupyter Notebook in the Constellate platform. Um, and here, all of these different, uh, these different fields are editable. So if I want to print hello world, which is the uh, common um, first line of code that someone who is um, learning how to write a programming in a new programming language will execute. Um, here, uh, Python says back, hello world. Um, so Constellate again is available at constellate.org, uh, but if you are already um, interested in uh, text analysis and are using a different platform like Voyant Tools, um, or you can write and execute your own code, JSTOR um, has for some years uh, made available uh, data for research. Um, and so this is actually, uh, on jstore.org under tools, data for research. Um, and this allows you to uh, define and request a data set based on parameters. So you are looking for documents that contain X, Y, and Z terms um, published between this year and this year. Um, and so what you will get back from JSTOR is called a bag of words. So you won't get the documents themselves. You will just get the, the text stripped from that so that it can be analyzed. Um, and so you can create and export a data set for text analysis um, using uh, JSTOR's data without having to use or engage with the Constellate platform. Um, but I, if you are interested at all in text analysis and you have not um, fooled around with it at all, then I really recommend uh, um, 
trying out Constellate um, because it is very user friendly and um, meant to start you at kind of the zero uh, level of, you know, what is a Jupyter notebook? Uh, what is Python? How do you write the code? Um, so finally, uh, I just want to point out some existing uh, JSTOR features that they've had available for, for some time um, that uh, you may not know about. Um, and so these are the JSTOR lab uh, tools and their various publications, such as JSTOR Daily um, and their libguides. Uh, so JSTOR Daily, um, if we go back to JSTOR, JSTOR Daily is their uh, daily newsletter. Um, so if I'm on JSTOR.org and I scroll down, you will see JSTOR Daily here. Um, and what it is, um, is a newsletter, a topical newsletter, um, uh, sort of um, on pretty much anything related to humanities, social sciences, and natural sciences, which are um, the fields that JSTOR covers with scholarship and primary sources. Um, and so here you have uh, kind of introductory overviews, pointing out kind of obscure areas of interest, um, new collections, et cetera, is Star Wars cultural appropriation. Um, and so these are um, articles written by uh, writers hired by JSTOR, and they also integrate in with um, publications on JSTOR. Uh, so I was um, working with a history class uh, on um, historical commemoration, uh, and one of the um, students is interested in La Malinche, uh, who um, was a, an interpreter uh, for um, the Spanish uh, colonist um, explorers, uh, and in helping the student do research, I encountered a JSTOR daily article, um, which uh, again, integrates into this really interesting um, publication uh, that among all of the things written about this figure, um, we hadn't actually uh, found um, because it was kind of lost in the, the noise of, of uh, all of the sort of things that have been written about this person that really fit into um, the research question about uh, commemoration and myth making um, in history, uh, La Malinche, feminist prototype. Um, and so uh, you can subscribe to JSTOR daily and get it, it uh, daily in your email, um, or you can just check in on the platform whenever you're interested in. But it really highlights um, what, uh, it, and you can um, also search or browse articles by um, different, uh, you know, sort of topical areas, arts and culture, science, technology, et cetera. Um, uh, to sort of, uh, you know, see what is cool out there in the world. I, I find it just uh, really delightful um, to, uh, to check out what they are sort of um, bringing forward about the platform. And so again, if you are interested in JSTOR Daily, um, you'll get a roundup uh, each Thursday if you sign up for the newsletter. Um, back on JSTOR.org, uh, down at the bottom, you'll also see a link to JSTOR Labs. Um, so the Constellate platform uh, originated as a JSTOR Lab tool. JSTOR Labs is um, the team of developers who are working on projects that make use of JSTOR uh, documents and platforms um, and sort of organize different ways of looking at things. Um, so the Plant Humanities Initiative is a tool um, that uh, you can use for interdisciplinary study of the significance of plants to human culture. Um, so if you click on it, it will uh, bring you to the Plant Humanities Lab. Um, and this is the tool that they are developing uh, for this project. And so it has its own URL. Um, Explore the history of plants and influence on human societies. Um, to see all of the projects, um, if you go to the labs uh, home, uh, there was a link there that said projects, or you can go to projects here. And you can see all of the things that they have worked on. Some of the older ones, um, yeah, graduated and retired projects, uh, they still work, but they are um, sort of less interactive um, and some uh, maybe don't work as well anymore. Um, the understanding series though, uh, I really like, um, where uh, they have understanding Shakespeare, I think understanding the constitution. Uh, they were working on understanding the Bible at some point. Um, 
And uh, what it does is allows you to um, sort of more interactively, yes, King James Bible, um, explore uh, different facets of texts. Um, so understanding Shakespeare, if this will open. Oh, somehow we made it to leaves of grass. Um, but the, the text itself, uh, it shows you the text and then um, articles about different parts of the text. So click to see articles quoting this passage. Um, and so it will bring them up uh, if there is an article quoting um, a particular passage uh, so that you can see um, the conversation across many different fields um, that are referencing parts of text. Um, whether it is works of poetry, again, uh, Shakespeare's plays, et cetera. Um, and uh, I find it an interesting tool to, oh, there's some kind of shibboleth error up here. I'm not sure. I think this is where it would, should say, uh, I'm logged in as me. Um, I can still see my workspace and everything. I'm not sure what's happening there. Uh, but in any case, it's a very cool tool. Um, and so you should definitely check out what they're working on on JSTOR Labs. Finally, I mentioned the LibGuides. Uh, so again, from jstor.org. Um, so LibGuides is a platform that you may be familiar with from UNCG, uh, the liaison librarians here. We all create um, uh, research guides and course guides um, for students and faculty in various subjects. Uh, but LibGuides itself is the platform that allows us to do that. And so JSTOR has its own research guides on the LibGuides platform. Um, so they have all kinds of uh, guides here, but they also have them uh, by um, group or by subject. By group, I believe it is for how-to collections, subject guides for librarians, for individual researchers. Um, they have them for students. I'm trying to find that. I, I'll just search for students here um, because uh, this is an easy thing to, how to use JSTOR for students, to share with students about uh, making the most of the JSTOR platform. Um, searching, organizing, uh, JSTOR on mobile devices, tools to help your research, um, including uh, another text analysis tool that they have um, that is very similar to Boyant tools in that you just paste in text um, and it will show you some significant patterns and, um, and topics in the text, uh, which is also under tools on JSTOR.org. Up top where the workspace is, you'll see text analyzer. Um, and so that is kind of a point and click drag and drop tool um, where you're not uh, writing or manipulating or editing back end code, um, but it allows you to sort of dip your toes into text analysis. Um, so uh, on the JSTOR LibGuides platform, um, they also have a librarian's guide to art store on JSTOR. That is made specifically for me. Look at that. Um, but also a, a guide about ebooks on JSTOR, history resources on JSTOR, um, advanced searching on JSTOR, uh, how to use their, um, their subject organization, how to understand your search results, um, et cetera. And so this is really useful um, if you want to become kind of an expert on searching JSTOR. Okay, so that brings us to exactly 30 minutes here. Um, and so I am going to stop talking but put up my title slide just as a backdrop here. Um, and uh, if you have to go, thank you for joining us. And if you don't and you have any questions, um, then please let me know. You can unmute yourself or put them in the chat um, and I will just hang out here. You're welcome, Melanie. All right, you're welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us. Okay, well, we can probably end the recording here. I'm sorry, I like something happened where my um, screen froze and I couldn't. Oh no. <laughs> but you were going great and I could see there was no issues. So I just was. Uh, okay, yeah. well, I, I, yeah, I hope, uh, let's see, stop share. And no, I like, again, it was something's going on with my computer. I don't think it okay. affected the recording or your screen. And I will stop recording.
But um, thank you, 